Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a, another brew that I'm working on. Um, this was kind of going to be the week of Battlefield Thaumaturge. I'm messing around with like, oh, let's see. I think this is my fourth deck with the Battlefield Thaumaturge. And the other card that I'm really messing around with right now is Twin Flame. And this deck happens to have both of them in there, but just a one-up copy of Twin Flames. So anyway, I'm going to have a, a version with Battlefield Thaumaturge and a ton of Twin Flames. I'll show you that coming up, but I woke up this morning with kind of recalling the old grab-and-go deck that I used to play last rotation with the um, Return to Ravnica and the Innistrad blocks. And the whole idea behind grab-and-go is to steal your opponent's creatures and then sacrifice them. So this is kind of a hybrid deck. We're trying to do a lot of different things, so I don't know how well it's going to work. Of course, we're going to have to mess around with the numbers. But the whole idea of this deck is to put out a, a either bunch of tokens, like little 1-1 one -one tokens. I mean, my, my whole goal of this deck is to switch a goat token with like a desecration demon through daring thief so that is what i'm trying to do i don't know if it's going to work or not but we'll have to wait and see if we can actually get that to <laughs> to transpire but anyway uh that that's the idea that's the goal of this deck i don't think this is going to be the most competitive deck ever i do think this is going to be a hilarious deck to take to your local fnm so if you're looking for a tier one deck that's just gonna change the meta game and you know win you a ptq uh, this probably isn't the right uh, place to be right now. Uh, I'll, I'm going to have some more competitive decks in the future. Of course, for all you newcomers, yes, the goal of RogueDeckBuilder.com is to brew the most competitive creative decks. So that is the ultimate goal, is to win PTQs and is to, you know, do well at GPs and FNMs and things like that. But sometimes I just like to switch it up with really, really fun decks that I don't expect to... Uh, be the most amazing decks ever and this is going to be one of those so bear with me here so anyway let's just talk about our sacrifice outlets we have a, a barrage of expendables I'm just using a one of a bubbling cauldron and three trading posts as again the goal is to switch a goat token with something enormous uh, so let's see here the token generation is going to be between the Akron Crusaders and Young Pyromancers. And I might actually want to switch around, mess around with this number because we don't have the greatest amount of spells. We do have, I mean, we have enchantments, we have uh, artifacts. And so Young Pyromancer is definitely not going to get the amount of value that it gets in a lot of my other decks that I utilize it. But I'm thinking that it's going to get enough value that we do want it in the deck as, you know, it is fodder for the Bubbling Cauldron, the, the Barrage of Expendables and whatnot. So I think it's worth putting in here. I don't know if it's if the right like line of play would be to actually add a, uh, cut a couple of Young Pyromancers for a couple more spells. So anyway, again, the Steel Outlets... So anyway, Spring Leaf Drum is just going to combo with the Trading Post. It's going to be something you can sacrifice later to draw a card. And also it's going to be able to uh, work with the Daring, Sky, Daring Thief to tap it so that you can actually get the Heroic. But one of the other cards that uh, we're going to use besides the Daring Thief to steal your opponents is going to be Harness, Harness by Force and Catch and Release. They're, three, they're both three mana. They get cheaper with Battlefield Thaumaturge. And it's it's going to be, and we have others in the sideboard if we go up against creature heavy decks. But I'm thinking the eight ways to steal your opponent's stuff is probably plenty. Again, we have stuff in the sideboard. Uh, and then Daring Thief works, of course, with Spring Leaf Drum, but the little hidden tech that we have in here, the little secret here is Hidden Strings, which works very well with Akron Crusader and Young Pyromancer, as you get to generate a lot of tokens that way. But Hidden Strings says you may tap or untap target permanent. Then, so that happens first. Then... You may tap or untap another target permanent, but it has to be another target permanent, so I guess you can't... Yeah, now that I'm reading this, it doesn't... You can't tap during Scott, during Thief and then untap it, but I'm sure, like, this is a way with Springleaf Drum that we can actually, like, third turn, we can actually cast the the Daring Thief, and we ha if we have, like, a, a Battlefield Vomiturge out, we can third turn Daring Thief, uh, tap Springleaf Drum to tap for a blue, and then untap the the Daring Thief, and that way we can uh, we can get a... Um, a trigger off it immediately. So uh, a couple other things. I, I decided to include two detention spheres in here as is a way that we can actually... Now we have our entire bases covered except for uh, Planeswalkers. So now we, we can steal enchantments, we can steal artifacts, we can steal creatures. And 
yeah, so even in, with enchantments, you can actually steal gods that are still uh, not act not active yet. So you're opposing gods. You can you can steal with you if you. And the cool thing about this is you the detention sphere will have something exiled, and you don't care about it being on your side of the battlefield anymore. So you can just switch control of detention sphere again for an enchantment creature or a god or or you know even if they have like a decent enchantment like like a blind obedience. I don't know what what they'd have, but I wanted that option in there as well. So again, we can steal any permanent besides planed walkers. Um, yeah. So anyway. I think that pretty much covered the basis here of what the deck tries to do. Again, I think there's going to be some really, really fun interactions. I've included Aurelius Furies just because it works really well with Battlefield Thaumaturge. If you haven't seen that video, uh, check out my YouTube uh, channel. I do have a deck that actually uses a lot, utilizes a lot of Aurelius Furies and Battlefield Thaumaturges. I'm going to put one more Launch the Fleet, one more Twin Flame, and one more Hour of Need in the sideboard. I guess I can talk about those cards. I just wanted them in here because they work well with Battlefield Thaumaturge. This is cool, too, if you end up stealing their stuff with, um, like, Harness by Force or Catch and Release. If you do have enough mana, this ends up being another kind of sack outlet because you can actually exile the card that you stole and then uh, turn it into a 4-4 Flyer. So... Again, and this is good too. Like late game, if you have a ton of goat tokens, you can actually turn all your goat tokens and a turn into you know four or four flyers. So I've got another one of those in sideboard. I thought I'd include launch the fleet in here just because it's really cool. With Battlefield Thaumaturge just a way to give you more one ones, um, more active treasons, more harness, harness, another harness by force, and two more catch and releases in the sideboard. Uh, I'm having Angel Concord just because why not? As it combos with Trading Post and and the uh, Bubbling Cauldron. I don't know if we have enough ways. Usually when I build an Angel Concord deck, like what needs to come in here is a bunch of War Leaders Helixes. And again, I could like cut some Act of Treasons and a catch or something, and add some War Leader Helixes. And maybe I'll do that just to make the Angel Concord uh, better. And War Leader Helix isn't too bad. So we'd want to add all four though in the sideboard and the Angel Accord would come in at that point. Um, so I mean this is something you can mess around with. Uh, you probably want like another Bubbling Cauldron, I'm not sure. But so four War Leaders Helixes would come in and, and again maybe another Angel Accord because that way, well maybe not, maybe just the one of, just you'd want a, a more... And maybe we wouldn't need all four of them. Maybe we just like two War Leader series because that would give us one, two, three, four, five, six ways to actually in our deck make Angel Accord. I don't know if it's just worth it to even play this Angel Accord, but we're going to try it. So I'm just going to cut out, uh, we'll just put, we need to cut out like a, I think two catches are probably good. Uh, we'll, we'll go down to, to two, two War Leader Helix. And Act of Treason I still want. I still want Banishing Light. still want the Launch of the Fleet. I would probably cut... Maybe we'll cut a another Harness. No, Harness by Force is just really cool because it it's... Yeah, I think it's just better than an Act of Treason. So maybe we don't even need these Act of Treasons. I'll just return turn another one of those and then we'll call that good. I think we have enough ways to steal our opponent's stuff. We wouldn't want to bring in any more than that. And I'm going to actually just you know save this with the War Leader's Helix. Again, maybe I could like, get rid of... Another launch the fleet or something, or even these turn and burns for the War Leaders Helix. But again, turn and burns just pairs very well with the. Uh, first of all, it it's kind of cool with you can turn and then uh, kill it with just one damage from a barrage of expendables. Uh, you can with Battlefield Thaumaturge this ends up being three mana to turn two of their creatures, kill one of them with burn if they have a little creature, and turn another creature into a zero one and then you know block it or whatever uh, that way so just a lot of just crazy interactions here I think I will try this angel Accord. we'll bring this in like versus mono black or something or some sort of control list where we want you know angel Accord maybe to be the win condition with trading post again this is this is the emphasis of the deck is to, is to be very very amusing not really competitive so let's see how it works I'm gonna queue this up in some two mana queues this has been Kevin with roguedeckbuilder.com thanks for watching